over the river this side of the street when it comes to Vesna Schwab however and what I'm about to guide you through these little settlements uh, this here would basically be the first location we're gonna get to this house right here uh, in the corner this is like a very very good friend with a Vesna Schwab it's a very good friend with a Vesna Schwab there's a two uh, this is a lady and uh, understood each other very well know each other for a very long time Ech, there is some more there is plenty uh, as you go across this village however there is a house here in this area that's where they had uh, children study in Ljubljana, uh, Vesna Schwab helped them, assisted these people, uh, gave them assistance to get inside of the university, maybe even got them a stipendium and stuff like this. I think she did, uh, but these people got rid of elderly people too. They stationed them in home for elderly people and stuff like this. The stuff I do not approve. I believe that families should stick together. I believe that you should take care of your parents. If your parents are normal, I believe you should take care of them uh, till it's over for them. Uh, I am, I am, I am, I'm a religious fanatic of taking care of the elderly people. I believe in this more than I believe in anything else, almost. I believe in taking care even in mentally disabled children as much as possible. Uh, if I would have a mentally disabled child, I would place him in care for eight hours. That's basically for as long as I'm at work. Once I am done with work, the first thing I would do is I would want that child back in my home. I know it's extremely demanding. I know it's extremely difficult, but that also depends on the person, how a person wants to uh, organize his life. This is something that is yours. You have to live with that. It's part of you. Uh, and you have to, yeah, that's how I see it, ensure that that living being is, um, is not basically placed between the walls uh, you know, of some state institution handled by the people that are not even your people. Uh, you, I don't think you, I could do stuff like this. I'm just going to put it this way, okay? So this family here that you see, when we continue, this family here, right here in this corner, they know very good Borut Pahar and so on. I can just go on, I can go from each house here for every house and I can give you the details for every one of these houses. I could go on, just as I have described this settlement, all the way down, all the way down to Otochets. I can go to, when it comes to Otochets employees, I can tell you who was working in 2005, who was working in Struga here. There is another castle here that goes further from Otochets. I can go just like this, and I can, right here, the golf course, you see? And I can point out the employees that were already employed in uh, 2004, 2005, and 2006. So you can't say that time again, I was in the US. So you cannot say that I do not remember things from MK Ultra, that I cannot go and point out and give you the details out. What you see here actually belongs to an uh, individual professor, I think, Arshic from Ljubljana, was also involved in MK Ultra. They have a bunch of politicians that would come from Ljubljana. Uh, this here that you see here, actually, to go, la, la, there is a parcel here that was sold to the Belgian guy, is what I was told on MK Ultra. It's something I'm gonna definitely check through the Ha! Huh. Um, book of the real estate purchases, deeds, titles, property titles, if you like. Uh, Vucic brought from Belgrade Serbian investors, wealthy people, and he that he got some tips on the side for dragging people from Belgrade into purchases of properties in this area here in which also Zoran Mujo, Serbian from Ljubljana, was involved. Uh, listen, uh, as we go along, 
uh, I am gonna get the names of the people I'm gonna get the properties I'm gonna get I'm gonna pull out everything nothing else but the truth and the whole truth is gonna come out you can't say you didn't have me here with the proofs with if somebody submit proofs video audio proofs or without them I'm here to testify I can tell things that uh, yeah you're not gonna be able to say I was not here in 2004 2003 2001 and so on and so on i have the proofs you don't have the proofs you didn't have me here i'm just going to put it this way and i'm going to get these proofs uh, you can't hide these proofs actually uh, so if people could get this audio video recordings and stuff to me that would be even more sweet i would love to see this compadres like trumpy bushy and myself around me macron merkel berlusconi uh, romney ron paul rand paul etc etc gingrich and so on and left and right i love to i love to see myself in a company of these people how they treat him like a dummy like a stupid it would be a fun thing to see for the world I bet this is what the world wants to see and I bet uh, as much as they entertained with my stupidities under MK Ultra, because I wasn't obvious you're not sober and you're subjective to this kind of use, uh, they would probably be entertained with this kind of facts as well. Schwarzenegger, uh, Sylvester Stallone, what do you think about that? Uh, this is actually no escape uh, for you guys. Um, no escape uh, it's already back then there is a bunch of people and you're talking also about the local politicians uh, there's a bunch of people that recorded titles deeds property transfers uh all that stuff it's going to be people they're going to come forward they will witness and you're not talking about like small people you can handle these already are people some people that do have a backbone they do have a cover uh there is many existing ways that these things are going to come out no way this is going to be silenced now this folks did have some backup scenarios like they're going to provide like extra security and things at this stage for me they're going to supervise and watch over anybody that will approach them blah blah stuff like this i talk about this in continuation um but you know when it comes to titles deeds it's basically dates of the sales who this stuff was sold to and so on you can't really uh you can't really uh there is not much you can you can cover and especially because of the people that were involved in this uh and some other people that this people have on the side that have observed and recorded this kind of stuff all this stuff is gonna come out it's gonna all come out no way there's no escape to this this already is a big case and it's gonna get really interesting when all this stuff comes out biggie is coming really never as a visitor officially but i know which how he house he is in and i know exactly how it looks inside of that house how about that within several days this individual when i was inside of the house they got him a friend's uh, Serbs Vucic Alexander Vucic brought with him some crazy people radicals lunatics and what they would do is they would radicalize him um, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just go straight forward the landlord of this individual I am talking about uh, is actually either his schoolmate either he was in his kindergarten with him because I know that that individual also is my age and under MK Ultra said I know this guy very well uh, we grew up together uh, he had a fight with the father and then he came to me this guy is not dangerous the guy is good and this and that how about that if you want to challenge me on anything memories from MK Ultra are still quite alive I can still pull the stuff out so they would radicalize individual within several days this guy would turn into a complete lunatic he already was an alcoholic then he started to drink alcohol even more he started to consume alcohol even more 
and you know it might be they might have done Muja suggested me this is guy started to get into my face and threatened that he's gonna kill me and this and that and all kinds of stuff all of a sudden when I was in his home I mean completely all of a sudden became completely different person eventually Zoran Muja suggested psychiatrists who had me in psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana Polia suggested me under MK Ultra that eventually he had to transport him to Ljubljana Polia because he misbehaved he completely lost but and also he suggested me that he also sipped something inside of that little vine so it tasted a little better on the lunacy hospitalization of this individual repeated I think about twice more uh, he was angry with me but over time I guess that he realized that they f me even more than they f him and they f everybody who ever said ever a good word for me this is the type of agreement they have created and uh, you see all in all I think a big mistake so uh, if it's gonna stop rain I'm just gonna continue and I'm gonna take you through the trail we're gonna go toward castle of torches not too late uh, we'll try to move as fast as possible I may even go through the rain I don't know uh, and then basically um, you know I'm gonna give you an idea what type of locations these people would uh, you know suggest how they're gonna hijack me abduct me and you know all kinds of lunacy scenarios a uh, Leibach Pharma uh, one and a half kilometer from here do not approach to that you understand if you're gonna approach to that what's gonna happen they're gonna come out of there and they're just gonna grab you and take you to Israel do not go in that part of the forest anywhere even near down that stream don't go anywhere there is another forest, the same thing. Mossad is everywhere. Plus, Mossad is everywhere. They got snipers here, they got snipers, snipers. Mossad was here. Uh, Mossad, my friends, Mossad. Look, you see that, that road right there? There is a road. That road will go like this. I actually have insulted right there chief of the Mossad boss number one man from the Mossad uh, when they brought me here on the MK Ultra and these people again this guy but this guy was uh, you know they did threaten uh, because I, I, I insulted like nobody ever did I mean I'm just gonna do it like this and it's quite not pleasant probably for somebody that holds you in, in his hands unconscious and the only thing he gets is basic, basically more and more insults that was not very pleasant to Netanyahu Netanyahu old Netanyahu could not even sleep because of me he said one time he was completely out they were not happy with me the relationship between me and between the Netanyahu team how can I say um, sometimes when some new people would come they would be like they would be like they would watch like everything you do even on mk ultra how you act and this and that like with disregard basically how <laughs> basically they're violating the law uh and actually we're not in a position to judge anybody in those type of circumstances they would not know me and stuff like this uh it would be like with kind of prejudice they would see me but the people that would come along that would get used to me they would they would actually become kind of addicted to me I was like some sort of uh, entertainment feature for these people no this is true um, MK Ultra is you can fool with a person a lot you can do you can it was traumas a lot of traumas but there were also some comical situations that were involved in this stuff these people will laugh uh, to tears politicians they would be entertained with this kind of situation they just 
they just wanted this stuff to go on because of their own uh, entertainment a lot it involved a lot entertainment uh, anyhow uh, what I was gonna say is uh, it was it was oftentimes it was uh, boss uh, can we finally kill this guy uh, or uh, boss when are we gonna able to, uh, well, well, well when will we able to kill this guy uh, can we finally kill this guy can, great can we go and kill him now those are like questions like on which sometimes my response would follow like aren't you gonna kill me already I mean uh, Netanyahu one time came and his team claimed that he no longer can even sleep because of me I was in the center of all this and it was like how can I say I had this way to kind of spin things around that <laughs> even under MK Ultra these people started to lose their mind Netanyahu was Netanyahu one time admitted that I completely completely freak him out that he no longer can even sleep and it's because of this because of me because of because of all this stuff that went on uh, it was like we're gonna meet I don't know he said in I don't know how much time and then it was like it, it did not even I think two weeks that would go by and it would be Mossad staff I don't know which one was but they, they, they claimed to me you freaked out our boss completely you f you freaked him out completely he cannot even sleep because of you you I don't know what and this and that uh, and Netanyahu did confess to me that this was this actually was the true and this and that and what did we say and this and that and so on and so forth um, a lot it, there was a lot of comical stuff I'm not gonna say there was not but you know also that kind of stuff did not supposed to happen you know they brought people from Mossad here uh, to train to shape up physical condition to provide security but also to shape up uh, even lose weight and stuff like that because this is such an ideal environment such a beautiful place Israelis love this place and I welcome Israelis here uh, I'll be more than happy to have them around uh, I don't mind them at all all through the locals here who have acted that uh, you know all this and that uh, it's exactly the opposite situation now uh, no I am the one I like it uh, they do not finally they show the real colors my neighbor Colenz uh, who was so politically correct all the time under MK Ultra, and who supposedly would work for Mossad, uh, individual was uh, individual is. I'm not gonna say it's a neo-Nazi. I'm just gonna say it definitely is anti-Semite. Uh, when he returned back from the Israel, that he had Maida with him, he had his wife with him. Uh, it was like the locals asking how was it in Israel. They have nothing. They this and that. It's it's ugly and so on and so forth. Not something from somebody that would be like, oh yeah, it's 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 great. It's nice. This and that. Uh, but I suppose to blame Massa, the Jews, Israel. Whenever seeing him, this is what he's supposed to be. A sniper everywhere. Sniper, sniper. Folks, if these people wanted to whack me, uh, I, these people would whack me a million times. They had so many opportunities to whack me if they wanted to that uh, it's a nonsense to talk about Mossad. Uh, actually, they, they tried to help me out because they realized that <laughs> Moscow and Belgrade and Ljubljana are completely whacked. That was finally came to Netanyahu in the late stage of this MK Ultra that these people are not like 100% and it's actually that I will be the one who will need help to get out of this shit these people have placed me in basically
when they uh, label you as mentally ill, uh, there is no way they can do more damage to you. There's, there's nothing else they can... Greater damage than this, they cannot do. They have tortured physically. They have done all kinds of stuff through labeling me ill. But, um, you know, undermining you, humiliating you. Uh, what these people have done, this Moscow, Moscovitry, this Moscow, Kremlin, and Vucic, Belgrade, Serbs, and Ljubljana traitors here, Borat Power and so on. This is, this is totally unprecedented. In respect to Vesna, Schwab. American psychiatrist, female psychiatrist who was present under MK Ultra, gestured if I'm ever going to complain against her, I will be finished this and that. Well, you know, the truth is, and I'm going to use again that S word, shit word, it's little shit I give about her and United States of America. Uh, you are the cause of this problem. You have caused this kind of problems. You have actually done this to the U.S. citizen, to make myself clear. Not U.S. citizen, but also Slovenian citizen. You broke absolutely any kind of, every domestic and international law in respect to the rights of the people. That I would refrain myself from going after Vesna Schwab. This is just totally insane. I'm going to put this woman in a jail. The same I'm going to do with the Muja and all these people here. It's going to be a, such a cleanup, you have no idea. Now, they prepare some scenarios that would assist them. They would actually make me even stop going forward after completing this complaint. But those scenarios are never going to come to realization because I'm not so stupid that I'm gonna go and build complain that I have built since 2006 to 2018 you're talking about 12 years long complain and in the end what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let it go and I'm gonna go for something that doesn't give me I'm gonna say any kind of option any kind of any guarantees, anything basically leaves me with empty pockets and have me go someplace and stuff like this. This is just totally crazy. These people are completely insane. Uh, European Union court officials have conditioned my sanity. Yeah, these people told me that they're going to acknowledge me. It's insane. It's crazy. This and that. They're going to all this shit they're going to do to me. They told me in advance and they conditioned me. All this was a condition. If you're going to go against this guy, it's going to be like this. If you're going to go against that guy, it's going to be like this. European Union Human Rights Court officials, top officials, condition me and threaten me that my complaint will never ever go through. They're going to block my complaint. That's why, folks, recently the only place I have submitted complaint to was International Criminal Court. I no longer give a... I'm going to use that F word again. Otherwise, it's useless. I did not, let's just say, I did not submit complain, I did not submit complain to the European Union Court for Human Rights because it didn't make any sense at all, whatsoever. It doesn't make sense. Uh, they blocked this complaint ongoingly. They have, they, what they have performed is totally unheard of. And for me to go and resubmit complaint is just totally humiliating. The idea here is to foremost expose them, expose the whole thing, and then go even after them. All through the European uh, Human Rights Ombudsman suggested me that my complaint is going to be reviewed within the next two weeks but i think he she did this so because so i would not go forward uh and as they have also suggested me if you're gonna they go it's gonna be also this kind of stage and if you're gonna say something crazy something like this and then what's gonna happen is we're not going to be able to help you and it's not going to work out and this and that. So you, when they tell you this, you wait another two weeks and don't do this and that and tra-la-la. Yeah, folks, uh, they created such a cluster that you have no idea. For me, there, the only, there's only one way 
and that's forwards uh, for them however I don't know what the way is okay so that much about this American threats about this American criminals involved against me people who have done this shit to me that they would even condition me uh, now uh, Vesna Schwab got a grant a free grant from European Union folks I'm pissed off I'm sorry I'm pissed off I can't wait to, to finish this video stop this shit and go do something else I'm not happy about this you wouldn't be either if you would complain 12 years about this shit nothing would be ever done about it I don't know whoever could possibly go through with it there's people laughing at me basically every day uh, they know I know uh, they know I'm after them and it's like but they pretend like act like they don't know anything and stuff like this I just had neighbor here came to me like and the other one another one like nothing nothing is like everything is normal you know stuff like this like really really provocating stuff Vesna Schwab got a grant a free grant money from the European Union she and her husband got because of involvement in my case how about this shit information was supplied to me and it's also audio recorded everything by an individual <clears throat> whose girlfriend wife partner rather partner than anything else longtime partner uh, was murdered through Vesna Schwab this is an individual who complains he was in the newspaper and this is also a publisher very well-known publisher a Serbian from Ljubljana who unfortunately however also was involved in this stuff but involving this stuff what can I say is the idea was they had some kind of funny ideas to create out of me some sort of new Tito something like this for the new Yugoslavia they talked a lot about this stuff and they have a connection they're gonna help me out and this and that I don't need any kind of help folks what I need is I, I need to get my life back on track I need to get compensated for the damages and uh, the rest of it uh, what they should do is uh, I have no idea what they're gonna do because everybody knows what this Serboslavia Yugoslavia was I'm not a candidate for anything like this uh, I'm definitely not interested Vesna Schwab husband also is a psychiatrist so this is a team of psychiatrists so as a couple of psychiatrists they give uh, psychological support to one another uh, their team they know exactly what's going on they're capable to help one another and they are involved in international psychiatric associations and they have a strong support from other psychiatrists from uh, worldwide which in this case is not going to make any difference it's not going to help anyways I guarantee you that it's not going to help you out in respect to my Serbian friend it's something I have failed to mention it's getting beautiful outside I'm watching that look what I did not mention to you nice we're gonna have time to go over today what I did not mention to you they Americans they start to suggest me that they're gonna train him to kill me and stuff like that no the other day actually we met uh, I don't think this guy would kill me uh, I feel sorry for him and I also feel sorry for other people they brutalized here I hope eventually people are gonna get up stand up come out and point out that's what I would like to see foremost now let's go let's go fast it's, this is a long track it's about 10 kilometers we're gonna go through today uh, probably we'll have to come back tomorrow I gotta do some other video as well and tomorrow probably I'm gonna finish the whole round but right now let's just go what you see is it's like a newer newer method something that is done lately i am not i don't follow this i don't know when they started this kind of technology but exactly what you see here it's how simple the cable installation is exactly what you see here in 1998 probably already 1998 
the latest in 1999 the cameras were installed all over the area uh, whatever I'm gonna walk you through all covered with the cameras uh, basically what you see here this this was the machine you have seen okay uh, it looks like this like a little trench however in 1998 99 they were using primitive tools like this they got the people here from the village who by the way are used to at least they were used to stuff like this and they would go and not only people from the village whoever whomever they got i don't know whoever they got and they would go and they would trench these things uh in some locations even only 25 to 30 centimeters deep i say in continuation half a meter meter and it might be actually 25 to 30 centimeters deep in some locations back then they did, of course again they didn't have what you see here this looks like sort of chainsaw they just go uh, you just pull over in your trench fast um, but that have picks so they did this with the picks and another thing is this is how you get cables through folks and all you do is you attach cameras to it and that's that maybe some of you learned some interesting stuff today everywhere we're gonna walk you're gonna see plenty of this you're gonna see plenty 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 electric poles everywhere you're gonna see plenty 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 of this everywhere you're gonna see it not this not this but this here a lot of this everywhere we're gonna walk today you're gonna see this 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 everywhere so you don't have to dig miles kilometers or whatever uh maybe sometimes just few meters uh, but sometimes they dig more than that there is a place there's a location here that they dig they did dig quite far because there, there was no other way it all depends how far you want to reach out with your cameras with your cameras installation obviously when you have uh what you see here let's say you don't need to pull cables anywhere because if you place and this is what exactly they have done it they would go and it would place cameras high up on a poles that would give them a perfect vision over the area however wherever uh they would need to cover some other remote area that was important they would do exactly the opposite they would pull the cable from what you see here down trench and maybe on some tree some place like this remote that would give them a good coverage of location okay so we want to explain this exactly how it is with your surveillance system so this is how this was done everything entire area i'm going to walk you through was covered and still is covered with the cameras uh they have at castle of torches where the dam is they have even underwater cameras and i would not know this stuff if these people wouldn't tell me back then i'm gonna explain to you as we go through it's interesting stuff are these things still in place uh if i would go and because i remember even where the cables ran if i would go and check for those cables uh, maybe maybe there are still maybe there are not um i am thinking about going and tra uh, trench to, to even pull the cables out i gotta really think about this because if i pull cable out somebody can i can do something on on a private property something like this or something i'm not really sure what if i want to would want to go and do that kind of stuff i might just go and do it i don't know i could I, you could go and cut cable do something i have no idea i might go try this thing out uh fact of the matter is i wouldn't know any about this any of this stuff if i wouldn't have seen it with my own eyes if i wouldn't have seen it with my own eyes i would not know a damn thing about it this thing would never get any of my attention uh, but because i've seen it with my own eyes i know about it technology also might have changed they might have pulled those cables out uh it might be so that 
are not impressed with me or whatever this could get on, a, on their way could create an, an issues and stuff like this i might have replaced the whole thing with newer technology upgraded the whole thing i have no clue they were upgrading surveillance systems ongoingly all the time they did keep these people busy here uh but like i said you know maybe maybe not maybe i'm gonna go and try maybe not i don't care but I do remember very well exactly what they were doing so okay we are uh that's our house right there that's a neighbor right there that's uh where the police officer is right there local uh, right here through what you see right through uh on the side of the road maybe on this side of the road i believe they would drill like 50 centimeters something like this uh like a little uh, cut inside and they would pull 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 this thing just so i don't confuse you we are right now right here we are going okay so this is our house but now this time i'm going from this side toward the barn number two here that you see that's a barn in a little bit we're going to continue the trail like this this way now i should say anti-clockwise this is anti-clockwise counterclockwise whatever you want to call that the opposite clockwise this is going to be our circle in a little bit we're going to continue so we're going to continue to it this way but right now this is where this thing is filmed it would go all the way to the barn that is right behind the seal cameras are here uh this thing that you're gonna see here uh this thing actually uh runs all the way where we're gonna go you're gonna see installations of this i don't know they talked about there are cameras basically everywhere uh pretty much I'm going to point you all locations how in respect to a cable this is not uh, where this thing was uh, or was not I was brought here under MK Ultra when they were doing that kind of stuff they would pull one I remember this very well all the way to the barn where we were right now that's a barn right there that's a barn right there and uh, that's a village basically right there so let's continue all right folks this is uh, a little village right there that's right there that's our house right there you see the car right there from our house those were uh, how can I say the people that participated Americans ongoingly insisted that uh all the way from our house you see that and to that right there the forest right there that's where you go in that forest little and you go across and you go to the side here um all the way up to that forest is set there are some poles right there they claim there are cameras everywhere that's what they claimed I actually believed in that. They said, whatever you do, don't do it till you get into the forest. So, I don't know. I'm just saying. Basically repeating what I was told. Uh, probably what I'm talking about, I'm pretty sure, uh, also is at the Liebeck, uh place over there for him. Uh, I'm pretty damn sure it is. So this barn that you see everything's so clean and in order in place and all this no this is not because people you know it would be like <laughs> before these people got here this was wow totally different place uh let's just let's just continue here that's where we're gonna go this is gonna be the trail over there is a village and you can only see the roof right there it's a roof from our house right there on the other side this side 
in a little bit I'm gonna come out of this here oh boy I'm gonna be wet but I also have an extra pair of tennis shoes always with me to ensure that in the weather like this it becomes a little bit too wet it's basically I change them I just change the sneakers for fresh you see this is a very beautiful clean farm this way not that right there but behind there Liebeck farm is known I did not mention there is a forest right there that you see that's a beautiful beautiful forest that goes uh, psychiatrists insisted that there is Mossad inside like I said Mossad was present all the time here because when these people would meet uh, Israelis were always present here and Netanyahu had a very good very strong protection he's using his own people uh, you, can pro you can provide for him local protection but he always has his own protection as well he relies foremost on his own protection on his own people uh, so whenever these politicians whenever they would be and oftentimes you know like this Netanyahu loved this place uh, they would all over the forest everywhere it's gonna be that's what we're gonna get you that's what we're gonna get you that's what we're gonna get any kind of tree house like for the hunters uh, they are looking at you with a sniper boom uh, Masat 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 that's a Belgrade uh, type of paranoia really a schizophrenia um, and they actually even come up with scenario that they mark you label you with a schizophrenia after they do the shit like this to you uh, actually gesture that you are violent folks this shit they have done this to me they have made the whole in place here under MK Ultra that everywhere they're gonna abduct you do this shit to you and then they acknowledge me as violent people please okay uh, right now basically we were here uh, what you see uh, right here still at number two that I did talk to you about uh, forest forest goes this way it's it goes further this way this map here is just not big enough uh, the stream goes this way and the Liebig farm is also somewhere like this in this area here that's about here somewhere in that area along the stream just as you're about to see uh next so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put here what we're gonna do is we're gonna put here three like this Lubbock farm like that sick i'm obviously on the opposite side right now right there that's a Liebig farm right there and yeah I do believe this was an outpost one time for uh, Mossad but this was a long time ago uh, this was already sold resold and so on probably I would say most likely uh, there's like a little beautiful stream down there uh, and this is where they did this paranoia here they would do it here they would do it over there in that forest they would take me inside and uh massad massad we are taking you now we are taking you uh you know hiding behind trees and stupidities pushing me around here and when i still proceeded toward farm uh that's when it, the panic grab uh fuck this and that oh he's screaming and this from females from females I told you that it's unbelievable how females can get violent when they have uh, you know power like physical power over male that also is the case that I have seen I have tasted that on my own skin all through I am advocate for the females as you know but yeah stuff like this just happens I kind of feel bad that I walk through this beautiful uh, flowers here but I have to to get to that farm to demonstrate you a little bit more about one okay so that's a farm right there exactly what you see right there <coughs> there you have it there you go there's some beautiful flowers over there too I'm not gonna get any closer because <laughs> Mossad is gone if Mossad would be there I would go inside and have a good time with them but they're gone 
and who knows who is here and what might be a trouble waiting on me whatever could be charged with trespassing or something this people police here that they, they just can't wait anymore to uh, <laughs> to, to, to do some problems to me so I'm just gonna stay away from it but this is a beautiful farm and it's a, like tremendously beautiful view on the stream and you know far away from pretty much everybody so this is the forest yeah I don't know how many scenarios like abduction scenarios Masad 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 uh, they wanted me to uh, and leave myself into 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 some some sort of really paranoia total paranoia that it's Masad it's Masad 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 the more the Masad the last chance would be for me to see Moscow and they organized that trip to Belarus uh, they cleaned the Minsk they cleaned the uh, Witebsk uh, then basically that's when they make uh, things you know for the trip to go there and see how beautiful the Belarus is and this and that and tra la 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 uh, pure soap opera folks Massad, 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 Massad. The more they scream Massad, the less the people actually see the reality about what's taking place. Okay, so this is a little farm I was talking about. All right, this is, this is a farm. I'm going to be uh, uh, quiet as possible. Look, look what a beautiful view right there behind that farm. Beautiful flowers. They screw up big time with me on that farm, boy. They. Uh, <laughs> they I don't know what they they thought they whom they thought they deal with but I'm not a regular person folks see this forest you see this here a river I would go as a boy here in the forests I I would be the, alone or with a friend so I would spend my life here everything in school the stuff they did the violence and stuff like this they never come to through my skin because I always was in the forest and in the rivers after the school fresh air uh, searching for mushrooms fishing uh, actually uh, helped me survive all the shit and I never suffered really from depression like other people do all through I was through the hell no matter what I did It didn't matter if it was midnight or one or two o'clock in the morning at night, whatever. There was no such thing. I knew fear. Um, in respect to the Liebig farm, this is why I'm saying. It was like, if you're going to come close here, they're going to come out here and just grab you. And the next thing you're going to be in Israel. If you're going to walk along the stream, sniper, Masat, you dead. This and that. When they did that stuff, the only thing I did is I started to walk toward that farm and observing them how they're going to react. And I'm going to tell you how they reacted. They reacted with a panic. It was a panic. It was a chaos. And the only thing I heard was, fuck, yebiga, satsmoza, yebani, zayabonas, uh, we are fucked now. Stop this and that. What did we say to you? What did we say to you? Stuff like this, folks. This is how it's done under MK Ultra. Go back. What it was said to you, what it was said to you, you know, yelling, screaming at you like an animal. And I started to walk again, and it started again and again. So I knew this whole thing about stuff they talked about was a total schizophrenia, total paranoia. I'm not the one who is a paranoid schizophrenic. These are criminals here. They are the ones, they need to be cleaned up. This city needs to be cleaned up. This country needs to be cleaned up thoroughly. We need to clean this place. So we're going to have a healthy environment here. So they're not going to poison people with the lunacy. They are dangerous people. These are extremely dangerous neighbors here. These people are extremely dangerous. The police here is extremely dangerous. These are very dangerous people here. This is the reality, folks. Now, uh, continue. We're going to go through the trail. I'm going to take you through the trail. And I'm going to demonstrate you where Russians had their episodes of abductions. As you know, it first was all Mossad. That was years that went on. Then it was also Italians and the Germans. 
the funny thing Serbs were always involved but it would be Germans and Italians then Arabs even would abduct me I probably have missed some somebody in along the way and then finally they couldn't they wouldn't they couldn't hide this shit anymore and it became more obvious that it was under MK Ultra, I thought I could clarify, it became totally obvious that the whole thing really was a Belgrade. Belgrade wants to ethnically cleanse Slovenia and make again here Yugoslavia, Great Serbia, Serboslavia. They got a problem with everybody, they got a problem, the same problem they had in 91. First they slaughtered Kosovo people, uh, people, Albanians, Kosovo, they exiled hundreds and thousands of them then they came out on the streets of Ljubljana in Slovenia with the tanks with the planes they bombarded right there uh, you can see it uh, maybe yes you can there is a mountain right there yeah, yeah, there that's a Croatian border on the other side that's a Karlovac I could hear boom 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 from that house right there were in Croatia. From Slovenia they went to Croatia, they murdered over their people, Chetniks, Serbia. From there they went to Bosnia and they started to kill Bosnian people and so on. The Russians pretended to be like stupid, no see, see, no nothing, hear nothing, no nothing. When Americans bombed, that's when they started to complain, bad Americans, bad, bad, this and that, bad Clinton and so on and so forth. This is how they are. They didn't give up. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to say is in respect to the people from my country that I am extremely disappointed that already back then they did not stood up for me. Slovenia got independence in 91, they brought me here in 98 and I felt strange to have the Serbs, these people treat me like a dog, like a dirt. Like you, you put the dog on the leash and you drag him with him and he follows you. And you have a stick in your hand and you, whoosh, and you will do this and you will do it, you understand. You see this guy, this guy, this and this and this and that. They would terrorize people here in these villages. And the only thing I'm going to say is, and so I hope that these people are going to actually come forward and give me some kind of voice recording video. I'm asking people to do this. Not only for me, but for this country here. So, so that we kick these traitors, that we clean this country up that is going to be Slovenia. What we voted for on the plebiscite here in 91 and not Great Serbia. I resent that. Many years I couldn't actually come to my senses because I was first generation in Slovenian military. Uh, first, second generation I was volunteer here against this Serbian uh, Yugo army. And I just couldn't understand that these people don't, don't have a guts to, you know, I don't know, uh, maybe they did. I remember them saying, several of them, one was my neighbor, he's dead. Another one was from somewhere else. I don't know who this was, if this guy is even alive. I don't know, was it so bad, was it, is it like this, or is it, what is it? Uh, I only know that there were all kinds of political parties involved and to me just you watching your paisano your own your own individual from your country being treated like an animal by your enemy in front of you like this for me or not a patriot i'm gonna tell you like this i don't believe in you let's go folks and i'm gonna demonstrate to you shoigu Sergei Shoigu, who, who always was a bodyguard, the closest bodyguard of, of uh, Putin. Putin always had him, like a left hand, always with a gun, always next to him, making sure that Putin was always safe. Always on the ground floor was Sergei Shoigu in the top in the attic area. That's where they had KGB, FSB now, known as FSB now. An uh, individual from Vitebsk Asylum Center. Folks, uh, they say to what mainstream media talking about Ukraine is a neo-Nazi fascist and this and that folks they, these people this guy is from Donetsk 
And as you know, Donetsk started a war over there in Ukraine. They cut from Ukraine. And Crimea, what they did, they, they parachuted the specials to occupy one. Simple as this. It's the aggression. It's not Ukrainian aggression on Russia. It's a Russian aggression on Ukraine. Clearly is. You know, this guy from Asylum Center, this guy Vova, this guy was also in the team of Vladimir Putin. They had these people here, and you're gonna, these people are preparing for takeover of the Ukraine back then already. And you're gonna talk to me about Ukrainian aggression on Russia and stuff like that. Nazis and stuff like that. That's just uh, um, the same story like about me. They fabricate stuff through the mainstream media, through their own apparatchiks, through their own uh, connections the way they want, and that's about it. For people not to know nothing. Ukrainians should open more news sites in English, is what I would recommend. Uh, but foremost, you got to know what you want, because if you don't know what you want, then other, other nations deem you, see you as incom incompetent, and they don't want to bother with that stuff. You got to show the strong will for freedom, basically. Let's continue with the trail. I did expand the map for you anyways. Uh, Castle of Torch, it's where we are heading. Uh, this is the city center of the Novomesta here this area here um this here this would be our house right here this is a little stream i am talking about this is a barn where we were uh a Leibach farm that would be basically let me see that would be exactly like this here this here this is where Leibach farm is and um here this area here this is what i'm about to demonstrate to you right now uh, because i want to expose the psychiatrist tatiana proksha that's a serbian psychiatrist that was involved in mk ultra all along and i deem for this woman to be in fact completely totally insane i don't think that she is a normal at all i think that woman is very mentally sick uh, women have depicted herself as extremely manipulative and mentally sick individual under MK Ultra. Her mind, totally twisted mind, mind of lies, uh, and real, real, real lunacy. Let's go. This was filmed earlier this year. Uh, Serbian psychiatrist Tatiana Prokšelje. Uh, involved in MK Ultra, as explained, along with Zoran Muja, screwed, really sexually screwed and sexually trained by Zoran Muja. I don't know, uh, is she does have such a low stigma to go uh, with. I don't want to get into it. Both Serbs, but that really doesn't matter because you had this Slovenian collaborators chatting collaborators from here too uh, went ahead went in bed with Donna Collins with my neighbor Donna Collins had a fear with him to encourage him in crime against me prepare him psychologically turn him into criminal if you want but I don't think you can actually turn criminal into criminal that's not really possible uh, just really an excuse for a fear for yet another affair who knows how many she had a uh, psychopath came up with a buggy scenario this is really totally twisted insane scenario on how for everything i have done for them for how they got the technology all that stuff they got in return grateful gratefulness they will they the serbs obviously the serbs and their collaborators here Slovenian collaborators would for the reward bury me in this place here how thoughtful how nice 